What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Of course, you know it's your boy B Hop Radio shouting. Hey, man, I got a DC legend stepping off in this thing. Kurt Ball, what's good with it, boss? Man, bless, man. Good to be here, man. Your hey. house, man. It's beautiful in here. Thank you, man. It's beautiful Thank in here, you. man. Appreciate yeah, you definitely. pulling up on a player. First of all, what got you making moves in the A today, man? Man, coming down doing like a little press tour, man, trying to promote that. my podcast, man. Yeah, you know I'm with saying? that. Trying to promote my all days brand. And they say, man, they say, if you come to Atlanta, you got to see me high. You can't get, Come on, man. You got to see me high, come man. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, so after 85, so is you. Oh, man, I love that. I love <laughs> I'm that. I'm on the highway, too, man. <laughs> That's crazy. I'm I mean, but way. Kurt, I need you to take me to day one, man. Mm-hmm. Coming up in D.C. and the game hit you, man. What mm-hmm. was it that made you get into the game, boss? Man, just 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 life circumstances, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, just coming up in that hood, I already was a leader already back when I was coming up. The guns wasn't always in; it, it was the fighting thing, you know what I'm saying? So I was yeah. already a leader with that. Yeah. But then when them when them drugs came, man, that Reagan arms in the '80s, you know, I still had a whole crew, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I said, had to find a way to feed myself and them, and kind of drift off in there, man. I mean, when you think about D.C. at that time, I mean, Chocolate City, man. What was the vibe in there, man? Man, it, it was something else, man. But at that time, unfortunately, it was the murder capital. Uh, the D.C. was great for us winning. The Redskins was winning. Sugar Ray Leonard was knocking niggas out. Georgetown <laughs> winning championships. You know what I'm saying? It was, it, was, it was all the hook, man. And then they dropped all that stuff in out the sky, man. It just made mixed all that up. And it went crazy. It went crazy. When the dope came in, man, how did everything change in the streets, man? Because, I mean, what was going on before the epidemic started, man? Man, before the epidemic, man, I mean, we've always been Chocolate City. Uh, yeah. A whole bunch of community love, whole bunch of go-go music, yeah. mumbo sauce for your chicken, uh, <laughs> and a whole bunch of partying, man. Like I said, we was big on the little street fighting the hoods, right? We never was gang. It was never was no gang in D.C. Yeah. So it was like neighborhood and we call it crews. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Then when the, it kind of like when the drugs hit, it kind of changed the game. It expedited the gunplay uh, faster. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we so we started mixing that uh, aggressive nature with the gun, and it just it just went crazy. It went crazy. Okay. When you first saw the dope flood in, man, I mean, how did the game change, and how did you find yourself in the game, though, see, Kurt? Yeah, because see, what what always was was drugs in DC, but when the crack came, the crack introduced a new player. Yeah, because you know, dudes ain't really had no, had no hustling skills to sell crack. Yeah, crack sold itself. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So now you got a whole bunch of guys getting into the game that really was previously their occupation was stick up boys, kidnap boys. Bank boys, and so now they say, shit, this, that, that hustle don't seem like, I ain't like heroin, nothing like that. I can just give me some crack mm-hmm. and they sell itself. So now you got different mentalities and different philosophies coming in the game. So now you got a whole bunch of dudes that got philosophy snatching niggas. They bringing that philosophy to, to the streets. You know what I'm saying? Come on now. So now a nigga owe you some money and started waiting for him to help him go figure out how to get it to They might kill him. You know what I'm saying? Something like that. So it just got crazy, man. It got crazy. I mean, you are around a lot of legendary folks in D.C., though, yeah, man. I yeah. mean, you talk about the Rafels, you talking about the Waynes, you talking about the Alpos. Yeah. How did you find yourself in connections with all of those guys? Man, like, uh, like I say, man, from in my part of town where I was at, I I, I covered a lot of landscape. Yeah. So we, we used to have fights against the neighborhood. Like we had a fight against Rafel crew, like in 86. 85 or something, so we kind of con- made a connection right there, right? Yeah. So after we made a connection right there, then we started breaking law together. So that's how I kind of got bonded with him. So D.C. very small. Yeah. Our go-go was just like what rap would be down here right now. Mm-hmm. So each little joint, you go to a big go-go convention, you're going to serve everybody from D.C. Facts. So if you banging out or whatever you're doing, you mess with the popular girls, <clears throat> excuse me, your name mm-hmm. going to be already circulating. Yeah. So I already was circulating for being aggressive. But uh, so then when the crack came, it was already easy because I had people in place mm-hmm. already in, the, in these different hoods. Yeah. So, man, so, you know, so all the all the dudes that had respect then kind of still networking together. Yeah. You know I mean? So it was like, it was, I ain't going to say easy because, I mean, ain't nothing easy about being on them streets, but it was easy for me to make a big leap because I already had relationships in all the neighborhoods with all the aggressive guys. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you see Rafael coming down with all of that weight, man, I mean, what was it like seeing man. that, man? Because, I mean, his numbers oh, yeah. were ridiculous, oh, yeah. too. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. When I met him, that was another level, you know what I'm saying? I, yeah. I kind of was play playing for real for I, for, for, I, for, <laughs> for I met him, you know what I'm saying? It was just like I was getting some money, but I wasn't getting no money, as the youngest saying, all caps, you yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> so when, when Slim came down and get the drop of them Jones, you know, them birds down, it was, the game came different, you know what I'm saying? Back then, we was just doing a little something under that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But when he came, it was another level, you know what I'm saying? You know, you, you got them connections from over the water, 
it, 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 it just it just got crazy. It's crazy. I mean, maneuvering in the city though, man. I mean, you know, the violence is there, the yeah. drugs is yeah. there. Yeah. What was going through your mind staying alive, or were you just young, crazy, and wild in this thing, Kurt? Yeah, when you young, man, you, you young, you naive, and yeah. you rambunctious. You know what uh, I'm saying? And I really knew a lot of the players that was doing everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if I'm in Southeast or I'm in Northwest. I kind of know the dudes who hitting heads and doing all that. We already had a relationship. So I really feel comfortable. Because now when you come on my side of town, I'm going to make sure the copy red for you over there. Exactly. So, I, so it's basically with relationships, with everything. So me knowing all the right people, all the people knowing me, I kind of really didn't really look at it like that. Yeah. Now when I was locked up and I thought back on it, yeah. I was like, damn. God really was over me. It was, it was really coming me. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because I was really, really walking and going to a lot of places that it wasn't really safe to go at. But you know what I'm saying? But when you're young, that's what you do. When you started seeing people dying around you, yeah. man, I mean, what yeah. was going through your mind at those times, yeah. though, Kurt? Man, it, man, it was crazy. Like you, young man, you, when you young, you like, you like, man, it's part of the game. You know what I'm saying? You, you find all things to justify mm. losing somebody. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Then it's like yeah. being on what up, depends on what the reason is. So if somebody was a foreman, you like, well, that come with that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Or somebody sets them up to rob somebody, like that come with that. Somebody. You know, just doing underhanded stuff. So you kind of justify it in your brain, right? Mm -hmm. And then this, I'm really embarrassed to say this, but when you're young and just crazy or thinking stupid, we was on some shit back in the day, like we the murder capital. So we used to do shit like, you can be gambling, and somebody might say, you jump out there, man. This is a good day for a homicide. Because we, we keep counting. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This is on some, we the toughest type of city. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just being young and ignorant and, and, and naive to a lot of stuff, right? Yeah. So, man, uh, uh, and we had a show called City in the Seas. Mm -hmm. They actually was with... with what you, what you would consider now, like, you know, every city got a local uh, uh, website or part, uh, a website that keep all the crime. Yeah, they monitor every murder. So every day it came on the news, on the TV. Another homicide, three homicides, two. So we was really, really infatuated with it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, man, we gonna run it up. You know what I'm saying? Just being, just being naive and young. Wayne Perry, man. Right, yeah. Coming across a young Wayne at that time. Right, yeah. Because, I mean, what was his mindset at? And you are already aggressive as your damn self, right, man. Right, yeah. I mean, what was it like seeing him in action? Man, Wayne was a beast within himself, you know what I'm saying? And he came from his part of town where he was strong, making noise, and he, and he, you know, laid his lick across the city at some point, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we never really had no... No disagreements, no bumping heads like that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It was like mutual respect. You know what I'm saying? But Slim was a danger in itself. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and a hell to be reckoned with. Yeah, My yeah, God. yeah, yeah, yeah. Slim, yeah, Slim, Slim was serious, right? I mean, with all of y'all being out here on the streets pushing and shoving, though, right, man. Yeah. I mean, how did y'all keep from bumping heads? But, but, Talk but, to me. but you gotta look at you watch the Animal Channel, right? Yeah. It's like when you see when when two tigers see each other, two lions see each other. It's almost like a you yeah. know what I'm saying? It's like that. Now, you see some, some deers or some, some <laughs> cows. It's going down. It's a real snake. They're going to run them down. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Exactly. So, so it kind of it kind of be similar to that. No, you know that what I'm saying? The, street, the, the streets right is there. like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I reference the streets now. I say the streets like more hyenas. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's a hyena environment now. You mm. know what I'm saying? Everybody 20 to 1. You know what I'm saying? So like so back then it was more like the jungle really was really being occupied by the gorillas and the lions, the tigers, yeah. you know what I'm saying, versus now it's a hyena joint, you know what I'm saying? The African dogs right now. Exactly. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. Alpo touching down in the town, man. Like, yeah. I mean, how did you feel about him coming in there? I mean, to be truthful with you, un uh uh unbeknownst with the rest of the country thing, you know what I'm saying? When he came and he came there on some straight business and just being humble. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause he he ended up he coming about 86, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I think he got locked up, I want to say 90, right? Mm -hmm. So 86 to about 88, or probably close, 88, 86 to 89, he was a businessman. He wasn't yeah. making no noise, wasn't doing nothing with nobody, wouldn't do that, wasn't bringing pack to the to yeah. the community, fucking with girls, you know, got dudes he messed with. You know what I'm saying? So nobody never seen all that, you know what I'm saying? So when 89 came, I actually went to jail, but when that time came, the climate kind of changed so bad because... When Ray, when Ray for going in, the streets was dry. Uh, so now everybody hunting. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. got dudes that was buying joint. Now they trying to meet up with you to put you on the trunk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's when I think, you know, stuff kind of got out of hand. But he didn't really come down there with that type of behavior. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then he was with the right, around the right circle of guys with those, you know what I'm saying? He really had some cover over top of him. Exactly. You know what I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, but you know, so he, with him, my personal experience with him, it was cool. You know what I'm yeah. saying? At that point. But keep in mind, I went to jail at 89. He's... He started cutting up prior year after that, with, you know, okay. with, with, with dudes like that, right? And really, real, the cutting up was really was dudes on his line. It wasn't like I was waking up saying, I'm a, I'm a dude. Niggas yeah. trying to get at him. Damn. 
You know what I'm saying? So he really was trying to keep the heat off himself. Exactly. Yeah, so it wasn't like no, no, no sweet joint like that. What was going on that led you to get locked down in 89, though, Kurt? I mean, they, they, they put me on the case for Rayford Edmund case, uh, with the, that, that largest case in D.C. history, right? Yeah. They uh, tied us all in there and played, put everybody, made it like it was one big band. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, so, uh, and we had to rumble them, you know what I'm saying? Even though I was an independent contractor, but <laughs> the, 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 the fact that we was pitches, you know, I wasn't yeah. the pitches they showed in court, but they knew we was together. The city knew that you know that was my man at the time. You know exactly. what I'm saying? And, and but they didn't have nobody. Nobody that we broke law with came in and say, man, he was hustling with them. It was just for real, like they do now. This was similar with the, the young guys down here now. Yeah. Uh, uh, thug. With that thug and them. Yeah. They gonna grab thirty people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They might got something on five people, but they know twenty five. Somebody that twenty five gonna be like, man, I got to. How can I help myself? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it was the same type of shit back there. They grab a whole rack of people and see who's going to help and who's going to break. Yeah. And that's what happened when you grab a rack of dudes. Somebody's going somebody gonna to fold. How much money was flowing around that time, though, Kurt? <sighs> man, a lot of money was flowing, man. I mean, I mean, a lot of money was flowing, man. Especially with Slim, uh, you got to keep in mind, like you hear a lot of people's names around the country that was getting money, and a lot of people was getting money all over the country. No matter what city you from, Memphis, right. whatever, dudes getting money, right? Slim was your unique because he was getting money on a retail level and a wholesale level simultaneously. When you hear a dude's story, it's normally he killing with the wholesale yeah. or he got a hell of a block. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Slim had two things simultaneously going on. And when you saying you're creating other dudes like myself and other guys that had a, a, a lower standard, which you already had set up all around, you know, and outside of skirt. So the money, the money was crazy. We was young, man. I went to jail at 20. Damn. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? So, I, I, I was, I'm breaking, I'm getting real money from 16 to 20. You know what I'm saying? He getting real money from probably 17. He went to jail at 24. You know what I'm saying? We went to school. We went to jail as as young dudes. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, so when I see dudes out here that's went to jail and stuff they was doing at 30 and 35. Yeah. We was, we was jail like super mature at, at, at. 20, like they lock exactly. the store. We go in the facade store. They lock the doors. You know what I'm saying for you yeah. to shop. You know what I'm saying. So it's like, so it's like it's different. It's different level with that shit. But again, when you look back on it, just young and wild. Yeah. Uh, God put. They say God take care of fools and babies. You know what I'm yeah. saying. We wasn't babies. You yeah. know what I'm saying. <laughs> so you know. So we were just happy to blessed to be there, man. Being that young at the time, though, man. Yeah. I mean, handling that kind of business at that age. Yeah. What was that like? Just maneuvering and. You know, in the streets at that tender age, man. For myself personally, Slim, I I, I grew up running errands for the, the old dudes in the crap house in the pool room. Yeah, so I'm already it hustling, I hustling. Like a, a, like my friend say when he say when we were 16, I was really 24. Yeah, you know what I'm saying based on experience. You exactly. Know what I'm so I already had bylaws and stuff and how to move, how to how to observe, how to do certain shit. So little small shit. You my yeah. man, and we we bought you know, your house about to go to the go go. And you in there cussing at your mother, already was trained, you know, if he cussed at his mother, he'll bring you a move. Little small little yeah. shit like that. You know what I'm saying? A dude saying, man, I'm about to get on the elevator, man. We going to fit the 12th floor. He like, man, I got freaked out on the elevator. He go over to the 12th floor, so I'm going to keep it in my brain. And they come and get us. You can't be in no cell. You you don't like clothes in areas. Exactly. So little small little stuff like that that the old dudes were showing me and teaching me, it gave me a heads up. So I really was kind of like built for it for real you know, at that time. Exactly. Being in the game, though, too, man, I mean, did you ever want out or were you just down by law? Nah, I didn't want out at the time. Uh, um when we was young, we got a, we got a we have a jail we have a, a, a prison in our area called Lawton Penitentiary, Lawton Jail. Yeah. So when you young, when you build up your rep with certain labels, it's mm -hmm. almost like man, I want to go to Lawton. I don't want to go to Lawton for a lot of time, but you feel like you want to go down to Lawton and make your mark, right? Yeah. Then you want to be the biggest dude in the city for us getting money. So yeah. really, that was my aspiration because when I was coming up, all the old dudes was really who we kind of looked up to. They owned the own corner store. They got a liquor store, lounge mat, dress slick while we gambling. Talk to the older people in a, in, a, in a good manner. So that's what we was mom. We wasn't watching basketball players and other stuff. So I was inspired to be like some of those guys. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And believe it or not, some of them guys, outside the fact that they were selling drugs, yeah. were some hell of a dude as far as business-wise, mandarins and you know, and stuff like that, right? Yeah. So a dude was inspiring me. So at that time, no, I wasn't I wasn't um looking to get out. I wasn't having no aspiration day. I'm like, man, I'm a I'm a row. I had a crazy philosophy I, that I laugh at now. I used to say, man, if I can live at about 40, but I do whatever I want, ball out, I'm good. Mm. 
You know what I'm saying? But again, being naive and thinking crazy, you know what I'm saying, and, and watching God fall on that type of stuff, right? <laughs> it'll do it to <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it'll do it to you, right? But yeah. When Wayne Perry, Perry goes on the killing spree, man, mm-hmm. I mean, during that time, you're mm-hmm. thinking, okay, this guy's knocking off everybody in this mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. What was going through your mind when you were seeing that? I mean, the the, the, the charge that he was accused of, I was locked up. Okay. So when all this was supposed to be happening, yeah. I really I was in Oakdale, Louisiana, locked yeah. up. But um, so I'm... When you when you from the city and you from the you from the jungle, nothing don't really surprise you. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Now for you somebody that's reading the paper, eating breakfast at the Waffle House, yeah. you might be like, God damn, they they doing that. But you around that element, you understand what's what's going on. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And then a lot of times, like I say, Slim was accused of a lot of stuff. I don't know if he's a guilty or not, you know what I'm saying? But that's another another joint. But I know, you know, he lived his life and he was a hell of a dude, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So what, what what the country hear about him is real, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It ain't, it ain't like a, a dude just blowing his story up, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And it's, and it's a few more like that that was fortunate enough to not to get caught, you know what I'm saying? So it, it wasn't it wasn't all the hints like that, 400 some killings and a little bit of population like that yeah. for Declaration of Independence. Okay, when you find yourself locked down though, Kurt, mm-hmm. what were the revelations that you had, man? Oh, man? When you went behind them walls, how long did it take you to say, you know what? I don't know if I was doing the right thing out here on these yeah. streets. Man, when I went in that jump, man, I was looking at 35 to life. My I God. never had a ju- I never been locked up as a juvenile. I got locked up, but I beat it in court. I never was locked up. Yeah. So I went from locked up to the first day in prison, locked down. They put us in what you call administrative segregation. They saying that this particular case, they can't mingle with the general population yeah. because they're going to have too much influence, which they was right, what they was true about. So I went from never being locked up to going over to jail to being in the cell when everybody go, my cell don't open. Looking at 35 to life, right? So oh what, hit, what hit me like, damn, I'm about to get 35 to life and I don't got no keys. That's the first thing that hit me, right? Yeah. So now, of course, I'm getting, I already was a, a Believe it or not, a God fearing man, because my grandma had me in church even as a young dude. Mm-hmm. I just understood when I was in the jungle, I was it was jungle time, right? That's so right. So now I'm in the cell locked down, I'm having more than enough time to talk to God one on one and personally, right? Yeah. So yeah. the whole time I'm when I pray at night, I'm praying for the ability to see the streets again while keeping my while keeping myself as a man, not crossing no lines. Yeah. So, and I and, and I always say, damn, I don't got no kids. I'm gonna get 35 out of life. So I always tell God when I pray, just like I'm talking to you, I say, God, get me out of this situation right here. I know I might gotta do some time. As long as I keep my manhood and my principles, I'm gonna get, get I'm gonna get life a fair chance. Like yeah. I'm talking to God like I like I'm making a deal with him. Like, exactly. but, that's, but that's what I'm really saying, right? Come on. And uh man, and uh sure enough, man, as time went on. I got a sweet situation, man, with a little money laundering charge, Ooh. man, and, and, and got out that joint, man, gave him do like four years in there, man, and, and, and I kept my end of the bargain Come on. that I ain't going to cross in line again. When you touch back down, though, man, what was that like being back on these streets? Man, when I touched back down, man, it was uh, it was, it was was surreal. Uh, now, when I left, D.C. Was, this was the murder capital, but it was the murder capital with the understanding I know everything going on. Ooh. Now, you four years away. Man, it's, it's new killers on the block. It's new young dudes coming to what's name. You know what I'm saying? So now you you walking into a, a jungle that you might not be too much, so much familiar exactly. with, right? But what, what the blessing with me was that my brand was so strong that a lot of dudes revealed themselves. You know, slide, I understood the climate. And not only did, but like four years. Yeah. So I never, my ear was still close to the streets. Yeah. So I understood what's going on. So I just came out slim, stayed out the way of, 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 of that type of traffic. Yeah. And just figure out how can I make my name because when I came, it was like a big thing. They was like Kirk Holmes. So I would say, how can I turn my name to money? You know what I'm saying? So that's when I start throwing parties in the clothing line. Exactly. Break mm-hmm. that down, man. Because, um, I mean, Chocolate City is still popping now. Man, Chocolate City going to be Chocolate City. Come it's, on down. It's getting a little bit mixed. They calling it Mocha now. <laughs> uh, 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 latte and all that, right? Latte yeah, City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it, it's, it's, still, it's, it's still Chocolate City, man. But, man, but we can't, and I came home, man. I say, man, uh, I threw a, 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 well, somebody actually, a coming home party with, without my permission. Uh. My plans were though. I told them, look, I'm gonna throw some parties, so I'm gonna let you know I got the halfway house. They jumped the gun and put my name on the fly uh. and had a hell of a turnout. So they basically <laughs> test ran it for me, yeah. right? But, but I was mad because it wasn't my money, <laughs> exactly. right? Exactly. But anyway, so I went on and, and ran with that and started booking hotels, man, and having the parties yeah. uh, uh, from 1993 all the way up to probably about 2008 or 10. In uh, in between time, I started the clothing line all days gear. Yeah, 1998 because the parties was good. I was killing with the parties, but I was only killing them three to four times 
a year. Yeah. And but the clothes gave me. I said I gotta find where I can get a uh, create a check. And I ain't never had no job in my life, so yeah. I'm trying to create where I can get some residuals weekly or Facts. bi-weekly, right? So I end up doing the uh, uh, the clothes joint, man, in, in this state and got in that lane, man. What was it like throwing those parties, though, too, as oh, well, man? man. Break down man, some man. of your favorite times man. with that, the man. Party, the party was mean. They had a yeah. jingle, man. Ain't no party like a Kirk Bone party because <laughs> the Kirk Bone party don't stop. You know what I'm saying? You talk about 93, they were saying that. I ain't talking about now. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So it's like, man, look, it was crazy, man. Um, I had the hotel. I had J.W. Murray, y'all, the Ritz car. I, had, I, what I did, I got all the top of the line hotels. Mm. Got all the best food. They got the lot, the colossal shrimps. I wanted to make it the event, right? Yeah. So we come in there. My my, your t- my ticket is gonna be forty dollars in advance. Mm-hmm. Proper, I, I say proper tie, which means no tennis. But the the the, the caveat that is, you can come with tennis, but when you come with tennis, it's gonna be a hundred. That's right. One hundred twenty-five or more, right? That's so right. of course, dudes are getting money. Cause the girls need looking for tennis. Yeah, like, you know, saying whoever got tennis, he got their bag, got right? The so yeah, they yeah. coming there. So I had a whole rock of tennis, so yeah. it was good for me, right? But man, we made an event. Ice sculptures, man. The, the spotlights out there. I just try to make it where those it, it shut the city down. We ain't had no social media. You talking about twenty five hundred people, uh, three thousand with no radio, no social media, guerrilla marketing, flyers on cars, flyers yeah. in barbershops, flyers in salons, and word of mouth, man. And it was a time of the life, man. Break down that culture in D.C., though, too, man. I mean, living there. I mean, what are the people like? What is the vibe like in the city? Man, the, the, the era we talking about, man, it was really, really, you would have you would have got a real strong understanding of Chocolate City, you know what I'm saying, where you, just like a party here and everywhere where you can knock on somebody's door, get something to eat, uh, you can wear somebody's clothes, yeah. uh, somebody's mother can discipline you. Yeah. Uh, uh, it was just unreal. Like we was, we we big. Like I said, we never hit the gang culture. We was like you run into a lot of dudes from DC if they incarcerated in cars or whatever. A lot of them gonna be nice with their hands because yeah. it was just something that no nah, break up, no nah, head up. Exactly. You know, so they don't even wrestle. Like if you wrestle, they don't want to fight. No nah, break up, no nah, y'all got to run my head up. Exactly. So it was that much respect. Well, respect with what, what's the name? That? Y'all ain't jumping nobody. You exactly. ain't doing nothing. Okay, y'all shake hands. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it was like it was a real real love. It was almost like how they started the joint like that. Detroit versus nothing. It was yeah. like us against against nobody. Yeah. It was a good thing, but it was some side effects to it too, though, because the side effects was we didn't really open our culture up yeah. to the whole country. Like the A, like y'all opened the country to the yeah, whole to world, yeah. right? We didn't really do that. We had a joint like this owl joint. This owl yeah. joint. So you got dudes like Puff Daddy, you got different dudes that came in and seen it, and they took a lot of little bits and pieces of it and put it on a on a big scale. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So and, and even with like the, the uh Clothing style, like we were the first city with the, in the country doing it with the urban apparel. Like people think, mm. Call Canal and yeah. all them New York companies. No disrespect to them, but yeah. we had a company called the Manor Shop. They had a clothing store in 1984-85. Yeah, all that stuff they did came in the nineties or the late. What's the name? So we was started a lot of stuff. So, but we didn't really put it out. It was like it's our thing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Everybody go to car say, man, we go to school. Everybody they know we from DC because this, or we go to the fight. So it was like we wasn't seeing the big picture. And of course. Social media and the internet, internet wasn't there neither, right? Yeah. So it was a gift and a curse, but it, 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 it's, it's one love up there, man. When you think about that time, though, Kurt, mm-hmm. and you think about your partners that are still in prison right now, right, yeah, and the ones that are in the ground, right. man. I mean, how does that impact you, and how man, do you it, feel about that, man? Man, man, it, 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 it really messed with me for real. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. like I'm running to sons, I'm running to grandsons, yeah. and, and and the work I do every day, I do mentoring and a lot of stuff in the community. So now I'm running to somebody's son that his father might have got killed mm. in the early '90s or the '80s. So now all he going off. What people telling him in his ear. So somebody, somebody don't like his father telling him, man, your father was hot. And he's I'm saying, man, your father wasn't hot. Yeah. But you talking to a dude that didn't like your father. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Or you might, they might hear all types of stuff. So I get all the time, I could be eating. Somebody walking to me, man, you, you know my uncle, you know my mother. So I, they want to know stuff about him, right? Yeah. So when that, that kind of hurt me, right? When I'm like, damn, they need to get a change. They looking for the, the yeah. history. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So shit like that affect me. When I see dudes that's locked up, like when I'm talking to these young guys, this is for anybody around the country. They ain't no, just for DC. Like every dude I talk to that's in ADX, that's in Lewisburg, that's with, them dudes want to come on. They, they like, man, I wish I would never pull the trigger. I never, I wish I would never did. I ain't met one dude. I ain't talked to one dude yet that's locked up. They got a body that's saying, so if I had to do it all over, I'd do it again. Not one. You know what I'm saying? We talking about dudes that's very aggressive. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I, mean, I don't know if they, you know the history of DC and, and the federal institution, but yeah. 
it's, 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 it's on some next level shit, right? So it's like, these dudes is on the phone saying, Slim, man, say them young niggas, tell them they don't want to be here. This shit is about nothing. You know what I'm saying? And so yeah. it's like, man, it, and, I, and when I see this stuff, even with myself, I got the Kirk Bone. The Kirk Bone shit strong when I'm in the when I'm in the club line. Yeah. It don't mean that when I'm in when I'm in uh, Bank of America. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It don't mean that when I get that Pepco or that, that cable bill, right? Yeah. It means something I go in the club. They yeah. Shout it out, my man here in the host. It, it, it sounds yeah. cute, right? But yeah. at the end of the day, it don't really hold a whole bunch of equity in it, right? Yeah. So it's like, man, that's why I be saying telling young niggas, man, like you said, it's a sad thing you look back and see dudes got 50 years, 40 years. Double life, triple life, man. The fellas that are coming back after 20 and 30 years, man, how are they when they touch back down? A lot of them, a lot of them, fortunately, we got a city that's kind of like, they re, we real they real good with interacting with the return. We call it return of citizen, okay. right? Yeah. There's a lot of programs in D.C. for that, right? Okay. Some of them still, t- they still time warping, they still got side effects from, from that situation, right? Yeah. So they, they, they might got to take a longer path or take another route, but a lot of the guys that's coming home, we they, we actually getting right close to them, and they working with them, attaching them to other young dudes that's about to be them. Yeah. In the, in the next 20, 30 years, right? So we, they and they got a lot of money for starting businesses, for housing. These so they big with that. So so a lot of guys acclimating back to society pretty good. Okay. But there's some dudes is just who they are. You know what I'm saying? They mercenary. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They, they you know they that's going that's what they gonna do. They gonna take that all the way to the grave. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's what we we have a whole another day on that conversation. <laughs> Come on, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> When you think about Rafe, or you thinking about Alpo and Wayne, and you mm-hmm. see how their legends have, you know, matured over the years, mm-hmm. being there during the time and seeing that stuff with your bare eyes, mm-hmm. man, how do you feel about the stories versus the reality? The stories get crazy and crazy every time, every way, every as time go on. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And versus the reality, like it's like you look back when you live in that life, or you just like you take like Rafe for example, like you end up becoming a government government informant, right? Yeah. But I, it was a time when you was living that life with those, we despised that that person. You know what I'm saying? People got their wrist tapped yeah. for living that life, right? And then yeah. you look back 30, 40 years, you end up taking that lane. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You look at Wayne, he's accused of doing all the stuff he did. I didn't witness it, but that's what they accused him of, right? Yeah. Now you talk to him now, and the man talking peace. The man talking, the man very spiritual, trying to save youth and all that. So it's like... It's just amazing just to see how would how life take you and how life exactly. go on, right? So it's like, man, it's 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 a deep joint, man. And sometimes I catch myself like I'm 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 real close with God, always been. Even when I used to be beefing, I used to be close with God. Yeah. Crazy that might sound, right? But it's like, so I'll be just continuing to think. I might be driving, I might think, I might be looking at the Redskin game. They go to a timeout, man. I might just go in the bathroom and thank them. You know what I'm saying? So it's Come like, man, now. man, it, it's, it's 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 a dude just blessed, man. Yeah. A dude just blessed. When you saw Alpo recently pass, recent mm. man, I mean, what were your thoughts on that? When you were thinking after all of this time, it catches up to you or what? Man, look, man, bad behavior going to walk you down. You know what I'm saying? Even a small bad behavior, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's going to walk you down. So some of his behavior that he was doing, far as messing with them girls and messing with people, girl, that was a big thing for him even back then. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And suppose that's supposed to track them down now, right? Mm. Even with him, like you end up turning the government informer. You was another dude that was hard on dudes that was in, that was informers, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like when you see this stuff, you like, man, is 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 the streets a lie? You know what I'm saying? Is this shit real? Or you know what I'm saying? You know what's going on? You know what I'm saying? So it's like, man. So it's like it is 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 it's deep, man. When you see these guys, man, and they partial in one way, then you end up being another way. You know what I'm saying? Then you see some dudes the complete opposite. You see, I know some dudes that come up. They ain't really want no trouble. Then soon somebody got in their lane, they turn to mercenaries. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, man, it's a deep thing, man. So I just try to encourage you. I don't care if you're a young dude or old dude. Man, know yourself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Understand that at the end of the day, you came out that vagina by yourself. You go in that box by yourself. God going to judge you one-on-one about your actions, about what you're doing, man. And just know, it's, it's just, just, just know yourself, man, because uh, it's real. What you just said earlier, though, Kurt, touched me. Mm-hmm. Is the streets a lie? You see what I'm saying? It's like, how do we get the young folks to understand that these rules only apply sometimes? They're just not applying the whole time. Yeah. And, and anybody will switch with that pressure on their back. And some folks will stay solid. But, I mean, it's a 
it's every man for himself. It's like playing the, the Powerball. You got a better chance winning the Powerball. If they grab t- 10 or better dudes, you got a better chance winning the Powerball than everybody holding up. Come on now. You know what I'm saying? And for real, like the street's done. Yep. You know what I'm saying? It's over. But at one time when I was, even before they, I'm not even talking about my time, my time start was the beginning process of killing the streets. Yeah. Because like I told you earlier, the crack induced dudes to the streets that really wasn't hustlers. Uh, you know what I'm saying? The streets always have all. It's like the, it's like the beltway. It's, yeah. Everybody got their lane. Yeah. You had dudes that hustle. You had yeah. dudes that rob. You had dudes that pickpock. You had dudes that pan whatever they did. Yeah. Credit card, what they call the swiping now. Yeah. But what happened was when the crack came, everybody started getting into the crack lane, the mm. hustling lane. So now all the philosophy of the streets and the principles got jumbled up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like when I was running errands to this for the store for the young dudes. Like, I, like when they say ain't no ain't no honor amongst thieves, it used to be honor amongst thieves. Mm. It used to be. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it changed when that crack hit on up. Cause now you got you got dudes that's locked up that ain't never did them but snatch a pop and rob something. I ain't beating them up. I'm just saying now they here. You made that much money and all you did was cook it up and stay in your building. You ain't had to go do nothing. So everybody started getting the game and then that, and then it just it went on. So now you them those the uh the uh the alumni from that era. They tore it down, taught the behavior, you know what I'm saying? Tell yeah. the young dude, he hold you, you go around and burn his ass up and kill him. You don't kill nobody. If you get somebody some drugs, then this is my philosophy, this is how I was taught. Yeah. If you front to do some drugs, I don't care how much it is. Yeah. Don't never get nobody nothing you can't stand and lose. You know what I'm saying? And I always taught that a dead man can't pay. Come on now. You know what I'm saying? So if a dude a hustler and he fucked up a half a joint and you fronted it to him. He ain't come and take it. He ain't come and steal out your stag. You front it to him, and he a hell of a hustler. Get him an opportunity to, and, and, to make the money back. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? You kill him, ain't no money come from a damn man. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So it's different bylaws that was taught to me that I that I studied in practice and tried to pass them down. But again, once the game start, when the game start getting cluttered, mm. the philosophy start getting start getting jumbled up. You know what I'm saying? He used exactly. To be, a dude couldn't just tell. And come home like dude can tell now and just come home and start, and start going hard, yeah. <laughs> putting on the hood and wearing black. They said, "Man, shorty luncheon." Yeah, and you couldn't do that back then. It would have been a community effort to burn your ass up because exactly. you are you are a threat to everybody that's breaking law. Yeah. So, but that changed because the the game got infiltrated with a lot of different mindsets. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, what advice do you have for the new generation of kids coming up in this thing? When you out there mentoring and giving out the game, mm. what are you telling folks that are at risk in this thing? Man, I'm telling them, man, it's no time since planet Earth been here, the mm. opportunity it is for somebody to get some money, especially at a young age. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I say right now, I say this joint right here actually got access to the world. The world. You know Come what I'm saying? On. Somebody see some of your good merchandise right now and exactly. say in London and say, man, be high, man. Uh, FedEx that to me. Come on, right? You can go on TikTok. You can go like you can make money in the house. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And and the streets dry. The streets too sophisticated. Like I got I got friends that's police, right? Yeah. They make more arrests on ring cameras in people's houses than the cameras they actually put up themselves. Damn. You know what I'm saying? The DNA right now. You go y'all go rob something or take something. If your hair fall out, a particle of your hair fall out, they can scoop that joint up and, 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 and knock on your door and come and get you. Mm-hmm. Your phone trap is too much ways for a dude to go to jail for a little bit of money. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And there's so many ways you can make a lot of money doing stuff on, on social media, entrepreneurial story. They, right now, any any major black city in the, in, the, in the country is trying to find ways to empower young black dudes with money and grants because yep. they want to slow it down. Exactly. If you're a leader from any hood you from or any city, now we ain't just talking about no D.C., Houston, Atlanta, whatever, whatever. man, go talk to an older dude mentor. Go talk to your local councilman or somebody and say, look, what opportunity is for young guys that they got? They got them, yep. but you got to go ask. They're not going to walk into you and tell you. Exactly. You can go right in your neighborhood. They got grants so you can throw your own cookouts with their money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you, you got to ask questions. Come on. You know what I'm saying? So it's opportunities in every black city because right now they trying to stop this shit. You know what I'm saying? So And they trying to pay the play, which is it's just what it is. You know yep. what I'm saying? But it's like, but it's your opportunity to pivot out the game. Yeah. It ain't nothing, man. I'm letting you know right now. I've been, I only did four years in conservation. Mm-hmm. I'm 54. I was hustling since I was 12. Mm. I'm telling you right now, I've been in here the whole time. I done seen the whole... I remember Puffy from dancing to Puffy to a millionaire. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I can give you a, you a, a, a lot of joke. My man, uh, uh, Amir, my good man, Amir, who yeah. plugged me to come down and come yeah. to your joint. I mean, he was on a, a, a street team till he 
He a big boy in, 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 in record labels and, and stuff. Yeah. I don't been seen a whole lot. I'm telling you, it ain't no reward for the street shit. Come on. It ain't no ain't no end of the day they gonna give you a, pla- a yellow jacket and all that. All you gonna do, they gonna put up, they gonna try to burn, they gonna try to lock you up, they gonna try to kill you. And if you make it and be fortunate, don't do no time, get what they gonna be saying. Man, you know, I think be high hot. <laughs> how be high and do no time. You can't even win. You can't win. You can't win. They're gonna say, how he do no time. You know what I'm saying? So the shit is is, is retarded. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Man, get y'all some money, man. Y'all can eat with the world. You can eat with the world, man. You know what I'm saying? Kurt Bone TV though, man. Oh man. Break down the podcast. What man. we talk about in this thing, Kurt. Man, Kirk Bone TV, man. We talking about everything, man. I'm I'm I am i i got all type of we're gonna get you on there. Uh, I'm here for I might got I might gotta come down and get you on your yeah. uh, unless you come in DC, I'm gonna get I might come down and get you. But yeah, man, we talking I'm talking to all walks of life, man. Yeah. You know, so I had Chico Beans in there, you know his yeah. story. Uh people don't know where he came from, family in the street. Yeah. Uh got dudes like Sean Brest that was accused of 10 murders. Um Man, I got the uh, the chief of post DC coming up. Mm. Uh, man, we talking about everything. The name of the joint is Exchanging Jewels, mm. but my YouTube channel is Kirkbone TV. That's right. So the the philosophy is like you doing. We're exchanging jewels. I just named you that. So yeah. when I'm talking to my guests, something it might be one two things you can take and put in your toolkit. That's right. right? So that's just my philosophy. I just want to give back, get some people in there tell their story. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna be. I'm gonna I'm say less. I'm a jam man. Yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm still. I'm, look, you're a professional. I'm watching you too. Listen to you, right? <laughs> you're a bad man, right? But I'm a. I'm a. I'm a. I'm a still move from what, what you're doing. You yes, know what I'm saying? Put them in my toolkit, and I just want dudes to tell their story, man. I want them time, man. They gonna get the real. Uh, I'm asking the real questions. Yeah. Um, I ain't trying to. I ain't looking for no viral moment. Yeah. I ain't trying to get doing catch no case. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Uh, I, the 2020, them talk to a lot of women. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mothers that lost kids in the street. Mm. Women that was messing with dudes in the 80s and 90s. Like they don't know it's a side effect of that. Yeah. Like you got women that was 15, always to about 25. That was waking, was getting them 10 or 15 thousand a week. Just because they was fucking with two or three niggas that had bread. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Driving BMWs, convertible bins to, to, to college. Yeah. Right? So it's a side effect of them. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, who they going to meet now if a nigga ain't catching? You know, a regular dude that got a job making 80, 70, can't do nothing for them. Exactly. So, so I want them to come and tell their story too. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. man, I just want to just tune in, man. It's on YouTube, Kirkbone TV. Name of us changing you. If you put up curb on TV, you say, man, just just tune in any of them, man. We just trying to grow it. We trying to get. Well, hey, look. Hey, hey behind you got that joke say a hundred thousand <laughs> subscribers. Come on, man. Hey, Come look. on, you man. You working, man? You hey, working, man? That's what you we got to do around this you thing, working, Kurt. Man. You that's working, what we man? Got to do. You working, I mean, man? Break down that apparel though, too, at the same time. Oh man. yeah, what man. What was it that made you get into the apparel game, and what was that like for you? Man, uh, I got into the pearl game. Like I say, the clothes store I mentioned earlier, Madness Shop, mm-hmm. they was always an inspiration to all the people that got into the clothing game in D.C., right? Yeah. But me specifically was, I was always a big guy. Always yeah. had some flair, right? So big guys, they be like, like uh, 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 they, they shy dude. So yeah. they might catch you going to the bathroom. Man, man, I like that. Where you get that from? Or, where you get that from? So, excuse me. So I started saying, man, I'm going to start getting to the clothing joint, and I'm going to attack the big dudes. And work my way down to the lower dudes, right? Yeah. And I also wanted to find a way to make me some residuals bi weekly because mm. I never had a job. The yeah. parties was cool, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I was snatching me some nice more of the party, but it was once every four months. That's you know right. What I'm saying? I mean, four times out of the year, sometimes three times out of the year. Yeah. So the, the, so the store allowed me to tap into my, my creativity as far as my style. My popularity, which gave me a jump start because everybody believed in me, yeah. even when I was breaking law. I stood behind my partner. When I started throwing parties, I stood behind my partner and told the same thing. So they believed in me. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I lit off the land my whole life. Come on you now. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, man, so I had to get into that. So right now, I'm just re- trying to reintroduce that to the new generation. Mm-hmm. I got a son, Lil Bone Jr., man, in college, What's man. Up? Shout out to him, man. I, I got three daughters, finished college. Come so on I'm now. Trying to, I'm trying to. Get them tied into the joint, man, and, and introduced to the new generation, right? How does that make you feel, though, man, to be able to see them kids go to school man, and knowing my, where you came from, my though, greatest accom- My greatest accomplishment, man, is seeing them kids go through, they grown women now, man, go through uh, college, man. My son will be d- done in a year and a half. Yeah. And uh, and I'm a GED dude. I got my GED on the federal compound in Oakdale, Louisiana. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um, it's a blessing, man. And, and I don't, per se, see, think you need to have a, a uh, 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 diploma, yeah, but it's good to have different tools in your toolkit. Come on, you know now. what I'm saying? When you or something can't work, right? Come on. So it's like, man. So that's one of my biggest comfort to see them do that, man. That's my proudest moment. And when Shorty get through there, my man, little son get through there. 
You know what I'm saying? I mean, hey, man, I'd be like, I did it <laughs> exactly. for, for, for them right now. Y'all got to get some money so, so y'all can take care of old man. <laughs> now, what are you doing about your story, though, Kurt? Man, right now, man, I'm trying to get with somebody, man, with some type of production, man, because I want to I wanna tell my story. Yeah. What I always used to do, even I played sports, I was the point guard. LeBron, my favorite player. I like to get people involved, right? Yeah. So I want to tell my story more, more like a DC story, mm. like how like the Y is. Yeah, yeah. I want to give everybody they fly. Yeah. We had some hell of a girls, some hell of a dudes. You know I'm what with you. And I was there the whole time. Only yeah. missed four years, a small window, three and yeah. a half years. So I want to tell my story through them, right? Yeah. So I'm, man, I've been trying to talk to setting up a couple of meetings. Ain't nothing came to fruition. I'm getting, I mean, get, having some good talks, but nothing ain't really came through, yeah. right? So I need a dude like a Fifty Cent, yeah. you know what I'm saying, or somebody that got the what's the, the what's the boy quality control. Dude, yeah. They got a deal down here, right? Yeah. I'm looking for them. I might need you harder than while I'm down here, right? <laughs> but yeah, man, somebody that can see a big vision, man, because for real, for real, everybody favor they city. It's just that's just how we is as people. That's they, real. You can live from you can be in Bat Rock. You yeah. gonna be like that my sound and what's name, right? But I'm just saying the unique thing about my city, we've been a chocolate city, right? Yeah. Forever. Every major city, Atlanta, New York, LA. You can name them, even Houston and Odor, they told their story. Yeah. Nobody really never heard our story. You mm. know what I'm saying? They they they, they hear bits and pieces. That's true. They said they go crazy in the jails. Yeah. They they said they started Urban the Pearl. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They got the go go music. Yeah. They had Rayful and Wang and Kirkbone and Fred. Yeah. But it's a whole bit and all of it in the same time now. Like for example, the wire. The Wire was told, that story was told, all those guys wasn't even the same timeline. It was guys from sixties, I mean seventies to eighties and nineties, but they mix it up. Yeah. All that shit gonna be timeline. Woo! You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be timeline. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's like, so man, it's, but it just gotta get with a, a real good budget, man. Put that joint together, man. And we can spill it to some writers, man, because, like, you know, a dude wanna give it up. And I wanna pay homage to the people that's dead, yeah. that get them some homage. The people that's living now, that's, it ain't so good for them, but they got, they had a story. Yeah. It, it, it's like these dudes, wherever you're from, like dudes, these blocks, some of these blocks, they tell me, man, you can't come around our way. Before you was coming out that motherfucking pussy, that dude that's all the dope nodding. Exactly. It, was running they wouldn't come around because of him. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So people still practicing that behavior, right? So I want to pay homage to all them guys, man. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? I, got, I, get, I get enough applause and pictures takers and all that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So yeah. I want to just pay homage, man. Make a couple of dollars in the process. You damn you right. You know what I'm saying? And man, come and, and, and keep it moving, man. I mean, what was going through your mind when you saw a young rifle blowing up in the game, man, and you was thinking to yourself, this guy's going crazy in this thing. Man, look, man, it, it, when we when we, we were so young, I used to be thinking, I used to actually be fucked with, I used to be like saying, man, Slim, you think you got a license with this shit, right? Because <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He talked a lot of shit, right? Real cocky, right? Yeah. Real cocky, right? So it's like, I was like, man, you think you're a bad motherfucker? You, you, you go on to jail, right? He's the player about the shit, man. Yeah, yeah. man. Uh, when they come and get me, it's gonna be bigger than light. They end up being bigger than light, right? But it's like, man, we was man, we was so so young, man, and like, like it was it was it was like every it was surreal. Like even when I talk about it, like sometimes I might go places and they they say, man, explain explain that. Sometimes I be hesitant to talk about because everything we say is gonna sound like it's a highlight reel. Damn. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want to make like a dude. Bragging about it, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But you talking about it's doesn't matter. You 17 years old, you go in the store. You ain't you ain't no savage or Drake, and they lock the store. They said rush everybody out the store, lock the store. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Jewelry stores, clothing stores. You know what I'm saying? We going to the the the, the, uh, the bullets game at the time. Yeah, you on the floor, your name on the yeah. pocket outside. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. That shit was crazy. You know what I'm saying? It got to the point, man, that I ain't even, if I couldn't go through the front door or the back door, I'm not even coming. Hey. You know what I'm saying? Come on, I'm not now, even coming. You. Yeah, 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 <laughs> man. Yeah, man. But it was, it, yeah, it was, it, it was crazy. It had a lot of fun, man. Uh, uh, unfortunate thing, the side effect that we harmed a lot of people. You All know right. what I'm saying? Uh, we was young. I mean, I ain't gonna keep on throwing the young to make the whole excuse, but we was young, no, right? No, nigga, we and, young. And they got young. They even got a law that came out. It's called the IRA Act, right? Mm. And and when it first hit, it's what is it, what is what it is that a lot of guys that went to jail for murder for that under twenty four. They had all that time. They coming home now because they saying your brain not fully developed yeah. to make a good long term decision uh, based on your actions, right? Yeah, that's what we, that was the same with us. Like we knew selling drugs wasn't right. Now, we right. we was clear about that. Yeah, but what I didn't know was. I'm selling drugs to you, right? Your kids. Now you, now you strung out. So your kids not eating. Yeah. So now your daughter and son going to school, they joining on them because yeah. they dirty, right? Yeah. So they getting in a fight. Your daughter going to sell her body because yeah. she trying to get the new what's I, I didn't see all that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when, so when you look back on that shit, like, damn, that shit was crazy, right? Yeah. So like that's a lot of time. Like I don't, re I slow down a little highlight because I don't yeah. want to think it was a, it, it was a game like that. But like I say, man, but that that. 
that uh, scientific study they did is getting people home for murders, but also I think they should translate that to dudes that he was breaking law. You know what I'm saying? It's the same thing. Well, go down that dark road with me, though, because, mm-hmm. see, I don't care about the highlights. Right. What about the darkness of it all, man, when you saw that it was hurting people and stuff like that? Did that ever enter your conscience and mind during that time, or what the hell? Because when you was when I was young, I didn't see it as it was hurting. You'll see it, say, with somebody you you know personally, like your man mother. You know, man, don't sell her, man. That's, yeah. that's, that's Mike's mother. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you had a, a, a personal Respect. attachment title, right? Yeah. But you, you ain't really see that if with nobody you didn't know. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You just looked at man, I ain't getting high. Yeah. I'm like, right? They shouldn't be getting high. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You want some ego cocky joint. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's just being naive and crazy. There's time going on. Like you say, when they sit your motherfucking ass down, you sit back and look at your highlight reel. You like, damn, I fucked a lot of shit up. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I, 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 you know, I, I did some horrible shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's like, so at the moment, to be truthful with you, I didn't see it like that. Yeah. As time was going on, uh, I, even though I was a spiritual person, all the same, man, praying at at night, man, beefing. We got a beef. Going back praying. It, 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 man, I was all over the place. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But it's like, but I still think God said, man, you're a damn fool. I'm going to hold you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got some other plans for you. You know what I'm saying? And, and right now, I just live my life every day trying to make amends. Because yeah. big is bad I supposed to be or whatever they saying, I got to go talk to the big fella. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he's going to be in the total nude. You Woo. know what I'm saying? So he's going to be telling. He's going to say, yeah, you was down there bullshit. You <laughs> da, da, da. No, you know what I'm saying? So I'm trying, to, I'm trying to make it right. What was that moment that it clicked in your head, though, Kurt, that you knew that you would never go back? And were you ever tempted to go back? You, man, you have relapse moments. You, yeah. have, you have relapse thoughts. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I was tempted to go back a few times. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. A few problems here, a few problems there. They ain't come through. I'm like, man, shit. Yeah. And then it's crazy because when you got your game over, the phone the phone calls ringing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I don't know if you feel, feel uh, 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 what's the girl, uh, uh, Gazelda, the, uh, yeah. the Blanco, Blanco, yeah. Blanco, right? Yeah. I was locked there with her son, Cheeky, in Oakdale, Louisiana, right? I stopped the Jamaicans. They were going to burn him up one day after the soccer game. But, man, it was cool. We used to walk the track every day. Oh, my God. Every day. So he he setting all type of ideas and planning. Man, you come on, we're going to do this and do that <laughs> and do that, right? <laughs> but all the time, my brain, I already had my mind made up. I really wasn't going to do nothing. Yeah. But I'm still listening to yeah, this you shit, You still don't right? understand what's going on here. So, right. So even <laughs> when I came home... He, look, he told me, man, we're gonna we gonna fly down Atlanta, look, we're gonna fly down to Columbus, we're gonna we're gonna do party, I'm gonna show you some party party and da-da-da. And I'm just talking walking around the track. I'm like, okay, yeah, okay, shit, we're gonna see. But yeah. I'm saying to myself, I'm not going no more for Columbus to myself, right? Yeah. But again, to, to answer your question, when I came home, he used to call me. Man, what's, what's, what you gonna do, man? We can get it to your door. We can get it to your door. And I, I'm, I'm I'm gonna get back with you. Like yeah. I was still spinning them, right? Yeah. Uh, and you know uh, he ended up getting down. They ended up killing him, coming out of the club or something mm. in uh, in Colombia. But man, even that moment had moments I thought about it. Moments after that I thought about it. Man, people just stopped coming to me probably the last fifteen years. Yeah. Usually, dudes still coming to me. Even they see my walk and say, "Man, I know Slim. <laughs> man, you know I don't know. Ain't never ran my mouth, man. Get at me. You know what I'm saying, man? Do something with me, right? So they just yeah. realized probably fifteen that this nigga really ain't doing nothing. Come right? on now, yeah, come on. You know what I'm saying, yeah. So man, so it's like, man, you know, I I, I had I, I made it my mind, man. Walking that yard with Griselda's son, man. I mean, yeah. what kind of stories was he telling oh, you about man. his mama them oh. and how the hell they were getting down in Colombia? Man, he was talking. Man, he was. He, cause he he had just left. What happened was he had left. This before Rayford became a former. He was yeah. they was in Lewisburg together. He got transferred to Oakdale, Louisiana. Oakdale, Louisiana is an immigration joint. Yeah, where those every you do your time, you go there, then they see you back in your country. Ah. So he was coming down there. there Ray sent a, 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 a letter saying, man, my man coming down there, man, just watch out for him, make sure everything cool. Yeah. So when he came down there, we bonded like that. Yeah. So we started walking. So Rayford gave Rayford gave him the whole history on me. Yeah. And then and I'm learning about him as he down there, right? Yeah. So man. He just telling him that. So now he know our whole case because he been, he been with Rafe. So, so he telling me how we was playing. But he said, man, y'all was getting money. But what, 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 what I'm going to do, y'all was playing damn near. You know what I'm saying? He said, man, we gonna, I'm going I'm to I'm bring it to your door, man. He, it was crazy, man. He give you a number for Miami, a number to New York, or a number to your door, right? Yeah. I mean, it was just crazy, right? But he was telling me how the, how they, how the beef was over the country, man, um, how the kidnapping joint was. Um, yeah. He was infatuated with our town because he was locked over around a bunch of whole bunch of DC dudes. So he met girls from DC. Yeah. So he he knew a lot about DC, you know, run names there, man. So we used to have a lot of little talks, man. And uh what happened one day, they the the, the Columbus was playing the Jamaicans in soccer. Yeah. 
some type way the Columbus beat, but it was some, it was a big bet bet made, and they won. So they was they was, they had a little eternal beef, right? And the Jamaican dude was strong down there. It was I didn't know he was strong until he left, but he was he was real home. We used to change books. Yeah. And one day we walk on the track in Oakdale. We had it was nothing indoor. It was so hot. Everything was outside. The basketball court, everything. Yeah. So we walk on the track one day. So I would see two dudes with raincoats on, like they lurking. So I said, well, "Let me go get some water. Look at this shit." So I get some water, keep it up. <laughs> They come walking to me, so I said, man, what's up? So they was like, nah, man, um, Joe Blow, my man, I can't think of Jamaican dude, tall dude, dreads, right? Yeah. He said, no, nah, man, he said, man, your next time, don't don't, don't walk with the, the, the Columbian boy, don't walk with him, you know, on the next time around. So I look up there, and my man, just, um, we trade books, smart yeah. dude, right? I ain't even know, you know, he moving like that, right? He gave me a look like, yeah. Now I get back, the cheeky waiting for me. So we get back walking, he got his earphones on, he standing and walking, I walk, he said, what's up? I said, ain't nothing, man. So we ended up walking. He so he said, "Man, I'm gonna go back in." I said, "All right, man, I'm gonna walk to your unit." And I walked him past the Jamaican dudes. Yeah, to his unit. He went in his unit. He never came back out no more until they until they uh trying, you know to his yeah. time was up right. But the Jamaican dude was a little salty with me. Was like, "Man, you know, man, you know, DC man, I never would have got your business." You know what I'm saying, man? But I I had to tell him. I said, "Look, man, a dude like my brother." Send them down here, you know what I'm saying? Under yeah. my watch, you know what I'm saying? If y'all had to move, you could, you had. I would expect you would build on your own time, you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna run a play for them, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So it ended up happening. Cheeky left, and man, send me, send me about twenty five hundred, whatever. Soon he got home, send it right back, send it right to my little account, man, and yeah. stayed in touch with me. And he fell in love with me because he seen the play, yeah. But he didn't never say he he knew what's going on. But he, I never said it, so he never said it. Yeah. But yeah, man, and, and so happened. Uh, you know, that was one of the stories with Cheeky, man. My man, had a, a lot of little talks, man. You and Ray, I mean, how often did y'all stay in contact during that time, sending letters back and forth? And what were those conversations like, both locked down behind the wall, man? Right, right. During that time, when he was locked up, like I say, before he started performing, we used to write each other in spots. It wasn't a whole lot, a yeah. whole lot of writing, um, but we kept a little, a little line of communication. I was in, at that time, before I got over I was in Allenwood, and Lewis was there, so some of the security guards, I guess they was – Working both places, kind of whatever. I don't know, but they just come back with all these stories, whatever. Yeah. But they they bring messages about all that. So we 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 stayed in uh some decent communication, right? And then when we and when he made when he decided to make the move, you know, to help the government, he kind of went underground yeah. a little bit and you know lost contact or whatever, right? But yeah. but like I say, man, before now I can't speak of the new guy because I I you, I haven't been around him in thirty years. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and anybody, you you got you not around somebody for thirty months. You got to relearn them all exactly. over, right? Exactly. I would have never thought if a dude would have told me, man, you thought he would have broke. I would I would I would have never thought that, right? Yeah. I would have put my money. I would have never thought that, right? Uh, that 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 fucked me up. You know what I'm saying? Because I know how you, the conversation we had. I know how we live. I know. Your mother, his mother, father, grandmother, all he comes from a hustling family. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The sisters, everybody, everybody under the bylaws. Damn. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. then with DC, dude, we we used to hang out hats on that. Cause we had all yo, we ever had like a little friendly, unfriendly rival in New York. Yeah. So we, if you yeah. got if you got a good relationship with New York, do you a talk nigga? Niggas down our way don't tell. All them niggas, Nicky Bond, <laughs> hot ass niggas, so that you, you name a whole rock of dudes, mm-hmm. right? And, and so we used to be proud to say that, right? So when he went like that. Oh, they oozy as that out of that joke. You know what I'm saying? Your man, you know, right? But so I was, you know, it was just it was just a disappointment to black guy, right? But like I say, he got a he made a deal with himself and with the people that he got to deal with. Yeah. However you got to deal with, you know what I'm saying? Everybody go see the big man. You might got whoever you got to see, you got to deal with that. You know what I'm exactly. saying? For a while, it fucked me up because again, he was like a brother to me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's almost like damn. And then I can say or do. So if I'm in the barber shop and, and a nigga slaughtering you. I guys gotta get my shape up. You know yeah. what I can say? You know what I'm saying? So sit like that. Took a while to get adjusted to, but he made the bed. You know what I'm saying? He a intelligent guy, so he he made a decision on his right state of mind. You know what I'm saying? Something you just gotta live with. You know what I'm saying? What do you think about those like Alpo that decided to become an informant and then just got out and lived his life? Like you said earlier, is the streets a lie? I mean, he was playing just as hard as anybody else. But then he turned state, and then he went on about his damn life. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. That man, hey, Slim, that was crazy. And plus, in his specific case, you crushing dudes, like you know what I'm saying. You getting on top of dudes, taking dudes' life. You, 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 you waking up saying this dude got to go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For whatever reason, he got to go. Then soon that pressure came down that pipe. You know what I'm saying? You went and cut, you cut a deal. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. The streets is a lie in 2023. It's been yeah. a lie for pretty the last probably 20 years. You mm. know what I'm saying? But I, but I'm saying it was once a time, even before my time, 
that the streets was the street. The streets had its own entity. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like now, you right now, you right now, you can go, you could you could be talking to some, the girls talking about who hot. I heard what's the name of rat? Like that ain't even that when, when you when y'all start keeping that stat. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like that's what that's what it came to now. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And, and with the hip hop culture, everybody making it, dudes putting paperwork up that's not paperwork. Like they yeah. made it a joke. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And dudes in and, and the government just sitting back, just taking advantage of the situation, like saying, yeah, this is gonna be easy. They only gotta leave the desk. Man, go 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 get Kirk and be high. They around such and such. <laughs> this is what they put in their they DM. Lie. They on live. They on live right now. Shit. Go and go and get it. Guess we be we we go. Man, nigga told on us, man. No, you told <laughs> he him was yourself. Alive, nigga. You told him. You told him yourself, with right? With the bricks on the table. You told him yourself. Hey, man, look. And the work I do, Slim, with the juveniles, the young. I can't. You can't reveal names before you know confidentiality, yeah. right? But you can go on these guys' DMs. They did a hell of it. It be on news. Came by four dudes, masked up, all black stone. Did I mean, all that shit proper, like on some TV shit. Yeah. But then being a DM, yeah, nigga, we up three two. You know what I'm saying? We coming back to see you. Yeah. They, 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 they come back. Yeah, that's why we crush your man. Yes, they come to the store. They, he wasn't even really acting. That was a, that was a waste of joint. It's like this shit is a game. Oh they playing God. with life like 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 a monopoly oh, of dominoes. You know what I'm saying? So like, and that's universal around the whole country. How do we get these young folks to understand that folks is really dying? I mean, do they think it's just a game or is everybody just numb to what the hell's going on? I mean, my God. Yeah. And then don't nobody realize it's real until they down the road? Yeah, but now, like, like I say, fortunately, when we came up, even when you came up, you younger than me. Yeah. We had an OG. We had an uncle. Yeah. We had a father. We had a basketball coach. Yeah. Like for real, these young guys, they don't got no male figures. Yeah. Like even if you go and you, you they parole officer females, they school teacher females, yeah. the guard in the jails females, right? Yeah. So they never even if even if a young dude right, you talking to him, you be like, Yeah, man, I'm just saying, who you talking to like that? Because he not used to a man, a man's yeah, tone. telling his ass. Yeah. You know, just the tone. You ain't even saying disrespectful. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So they so to they defense, they don't know. Better in a lot of instances, and then yeah. a lot of them was born with no sensitivity because all they was born into seeing this to yeah. death. Like you see a young girl, like I just tell the people, you see a young girl that's twenty five or under, she might be in the store in line with a blouse on. You can see right through to see the, the black around her nipple. Yeah, we like what the fuck? She ain't looking at her. But to her defense, since she been born, she been yeah. seeing this on TV, yeah, in the videos, in the movies, in the clubs. So this is normal exactly. for them. It ain't normal to us. Yeah. Right. So, we gotta find a way to put some sensitivity in them because they desensitize. Number it's one, real. right? All the men in America, especially black men, got we gotta do our part. You ain't gotta you ain't gotta go adopt nobody. You ain't gotta go in the hood and sit on the block. But just one month, one person you see a young nigga working in Safeway or Giants, tattoo on his neck, he bagging a bag. You know he from that store. You you, yeah. that, you know that, right? Pull him up, man. Yeah. Give us immigration. Tip him. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Let them know, Slim, man. I, man, what you doing big? And I see them young, and I say, man, can I talk to you for a minute? What you doing some hell of What you mean, OG? Man, you working. I know you from. Where you from? I'm from. So I say, Slim, ain't no way. Why was your age out did this? Man, what you doing? This man shit. Come on. And then, man, for real, yeah, man. I appreciate it, man. Like, they need that encouragement. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? They need that hug. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't need no more old dudes. And I ain't no dude that be the old dude. I ain't one dude that's like, old dudes not get away. No, old dudes, you need to get involved. You just yep. gotta know your part. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can't be trying to be friends with young dudes to get in the VIP and fuck all the girls with them. Come on. You gotta give them law. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Morant. Come on, man. He's shorty. He gotta have some dudes around him to give him some law. You won. Come on. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, man, stuff like that, man. We Everybody gotta get involved. It's a team effort. Now, all that, that, I'm from. Middle, I'm from Fourth Fifth Ward. I'm from Brooklyn. No, no, nah. this a this a world. This a country battle. This this a whole race battle. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Dudes need to dudes need to come together and figure out how we can help each other. You need to be able to call and say, "Boom, man, got my young from Atlanta coming up, DC, man. They don't, they, you know, they hot, man. Try to pull up on them, show them some little niggas and meet them right there. Be like, look, man, this is a, don't, don't don't eat here, don't do this. Them dudes you beef with, I know they they OG. Come on, let's let's go talk. Exactly. Like, this got to be a team effort. You can't, ain't no big use and little eyes or whatever. You exactly. know what I'm saying? It's, it's real, man. It's real. Kurt, during your time as a young man, though, in the game, I mean. Were there ever any times that you felt like my life is on the line in this thing and you kept on going? Yeah, when you was beefing, we had a neighborhood crew beefing. Mm -hmm. uh, when you know, when you know you, the people know you, you, you moving a lot of weight, people on your line, yeah. but it's like the way you live, 
like how the young think like now I'm good. I'm a nigga can't I'm, I'm protect you 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 think you moving the way that like yeah. you know you might be moving like, I I got kept four or five dudes with me. Yeah. yeah even I got my two seater car, I got my trunk, my, I had a convertible, I got a dude laying in my trunk. Laying the car in the back, even I got a date, she only yeah. know he there. You know what I'm saying? So in my brain, I'm circling in my parking lot. Exactly. So in my brain, I'm fully protected. Exactly. Right? But all the time, again, God kept me from really getting burned up. But in my brain, I'm like, man, I'm insulated. They can't exactly. get at me. Exactly. They better not come bullshit because you young. Come on. You know what I'm saying? You young. But if a dude really, really, if a dude really hunting, if a can't dude really, really it. hunting. Yeah. It is what it is. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? If yeah. he really hunting. Yeah. I ain't talking about just come out, oh, I seen B Harry, shoot, boom, 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 two weeks yeah. later. I'm talking about hunting. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I like, say yeah. that all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The folks want you, they going to get man, you. The folks, man, they hit it the president. It don't matter who it is. They, exactly. they hit the president, man. They made Slim. And I tell, like, I be telling y'all now, I say Slim. They say, man, back then. I say, yeah, it was bad then. I say, even worse because now it's different from this crew beefing, this crew beefing, and both sides got a whole lot of money. That's a whole different beef from two crews that ain't got no money. Yeah. Like, like, like we can go to Atlanta City and catch the Tyson fight and, and have a whole crew just beefing while we're at the fight. Exactly. We can be in the Bahamas while the whole crew be so it's some next level. So you had to be really on top of your game. Come on. To, to, and, and lucky and blessed to survive that stuff, right? So we love man. So it's like, man, so a lot of days I thought that it can happen. Uh you living like, man, you got the mentality, man. If we go, I go. If I go to jail, I go to jail. Cause you in that you in that mode. And you That's gotta right. be in that mode when you live in that life. Come on. You know what I'm saying? But when you step out of it and look back into it, you be like, damn, God, you really, really favor me. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? You really, really favor, you really, really favor me, man. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. And ask your question earlier, don't lose your thought. Now, I you? knew the moment that I was, I was over with me. I had in my brand was gonna break little and I came home when I and I was asked hell strong. But when I had my oldest daughter, uh and I held up my arm in 1993 or 1994 and beat me up lucky. <laughs> but like, when I had her arms, right, I knew then the game over. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The game. I ain't, she ain't coming through no plexiglass talking to me. Exactly. I ain't going to be locked up. Nigga smacking all the shit out of her. Like, exactly. I need to be here and get this right. I'm with you. You know what I'm saying? So that's when I knew it was, that's when I knew it was officially over. Nah, I can yeah, dig that. definitely. Lastly, Kurt, is there anything you want your people out here to know? And then also, how can folks contact you if they're trying to get with you? Man, you can contact me, man. I'm on Instagram, Kirkbone, C-U-R-T-B-O-N-E, underscore D-C. And I, and my, and my, I also got uh, my clothing uh, Instagram is all days, A-L-L-D-A-Z. Mm-hmm. G E A R gear all days gear yes sir and then my and then my YouTube man, I really want y'all to jump on that YouTube and follow me on that Instagram my Kirkbone joint mm-hmm. the YouTube is Kirkbone TV same spelling C U R T B O N E TV and man you can hit me up man I, I'm I'm real active you DM DM me on, on my uh, Instagram I'm, I'm interactive I might I'll, I'll be getting up here I might don't get you the same day yeah. but I'm, I'm going down the line come on you now. know what I'm saying man because I'm getting little and I go play they like man you come to Detroit I want to take you eat I want to meet you. I want to I want to I want to touch. I'm from the old school. I like exactly. the hug. You know what I'm saying? I want to go with your, your, your chicken and waffle joint. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I, I, want, I want to be amongst the people. I you know what I'm saying? That. So, man, so if, I just want to leave. I can leave anything, man. Just what we touched on, what you touched on, I touched on, man, that, man, it's no opportunity like it is now. Yeah. Uh, man, pivot out that life, man. I know it's rough out there. You know what I'm saying? I know it's rough. I mean, I ain't going to be now. I know some people open that refrigerator, it ain't, it ain't nothing there but this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, just this. Ain't yeah. no free cheese. I don't even hear about getting free cheese out no more. Ooh. It's nothing there. So I know it's rough. Come I on. I know it's rough. But man, you got to put our pride to the side as black people. You got to knock on that church door. Mm-hmm. You got you got to go to that, that, that knock on, uh, 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 go down and ask the corner man for a job. Talk to dudes that you're in your neighborhood supposed to be OGs. Pull yeah. us up. Exactly. Look, man, I, I, how, what I need to do? I, what, give me some. Give me some guidance. Yeah. You know somebody can hire me. Yeah. I'm thinking about Robinson. What you think? Like, go pull up some dudes, man. You know what I'm saying? On. Put your pride to the side. You know what I'm saying? We black men. We full of that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, man, reach into your um, network, man, and, and and get out your horizon. These little dudes, y'all, you meet in other other states, man. Network with each other, like. Like if, if Atlanta might got the crash for a cheap price, yep. then it is in DC. Get with B High, whoever be like, man, how much the crash? Man, I'm, I'm gonna buy the crash, send them up. Like network, man, it's too many ways to get money. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? TikTok and all this stuff here don't gotta be all dumb crazy shit. Come up with some creative shit. Like I said, y'all, the the generation everywhere. I told y'all, get a walk some dogs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Get a little dog park, make it cool. Come it's on. There's a lot of ways to get money, man. Don't go in that penitentiary. Not because I'm saying you're gonna be scared. Fuck all that. Yeah. You don't want to be locked up like a dog for the rest of your life to God knock on the door. Now you come out the womb, a little bit of time on the street, now you count it, open up your ass every time you go on the opening your ass. Yeah. And don't give a how many people you kill, how much money you yeah. had, your ass getting open. 
My God. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. the nigga and the fucked up and the silly. But, hey man, I can't say spread up again. I can't. Did you see him? I ain't like like you being humiliated every day. Yeah. And all the dudes that your man's, they not gonna be able to do the time. And the last time you hear somebody say your man gonna do a time, nigga, my man good. He might be good, but guess what? He might not be with you not because he's not good. It's because he living life. Yeah. You know, so I got niggas that, that 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 that's in jail. That's like my brother. But if my but if my daughter need a hundred dollars and they need a hundred dollars, they not getting a hundred dollars. And on. I love them. Exactly. So you might be a reason why I do cross you or not in your favor because he living life. Yeah. Not because he just switched up on you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And your yeah. girl going to fuck. She going to live her life. Don't she even. I'm not, don't even beat her up. Don't even call her no whore. Exactly. No freak. No nothing. She going to live her life. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Guess what? And I'm closing this. The dude she most likely going to fuck is the dude who you fuck because guess what? He the dude who Took you had spot. sending the money over there, bringing yeah. the money, paying the bills. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's how it go. It's yeah. an ugly game, man. You know what I'm saying? So, man, just find a way to get some money, man. Legally. Legally. Man, thank you for man, having me, appreciate man. Appreciate you thank coming through this man. thing, yeah, man. man. What you know, but the best of much Oh, man, say. I appreciate it, man. Be high radio, shout it. Kurt Ball, holla at y'all in a minute, man. We gone.